It's your Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, February 14th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that wants to know, Russ, since it's Valentine's Day, if the Flyers were the Bachelor and you were giving one player a rose to stick around for next season, who would that be? I would give a rose to Noah Cates. Ah, that is a good one. All right, we are going to talk about some to-dos that the Flyers need to get to on this road trip. Plus, it's Tuesday, so we are going to talk phantoms all on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who is on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Flyers. That is where we post about our latest episode and Flyers news. You can also email the show at lockdownflyers at gmail. We've got a mailbag coming up on tomorrow's show. So get those questions in locked on flyers is free and available on apple Podcasts, spotify wherever you listen to podcasts so subscribe you'll get all of our episodes here on the locked on podcast network plus we're over on youtube so subscribe there as well russ uh we've got this west road trip coming up later this week and uh you know it begins against seattle on thursday then they head to vancouver on saturday and then the following week we've got the flames and the oilers before they head back to town so a little bit of a tough schedule and you know, the Flyers have a lot to do right now, a lot to get done in terms of sort of solidifying the team for the season and also figuring out what they're going to do at trade deadline as we inch closer to the date. So I, I think, you know, the first question I have for the Flyers right now is who goes on that road trip as the extra forward, right? Because, you know, they called up Ollie Lixel, but they sent Kiefer Bellows down. Uh, who knows? They may have made a decision by the time you can hear this podcast, but uh, you would think that they would call somebody back up to be the extra forward. Uh, who do you think that's going to be? It's a good question. Um, see, I don't know if they're going to call up anybody. I wonder if they'll just have Justin Braun be on the thing, and if he doesn't play, he plays, and plays, doesn't play, rather, he gets scratched. I think Lixil should stay there, and we could talk about that in a little bit, but I, I think it's going to be Braun. He just doesn't play anymore, but he's still a factor in case there's an injury. And Torts is always going to worry about defense first. So I think he's going to be more worried about that. It's a really interesting option because I think it dovetails into our next question that we have is, are they going to do anything on this road trip to showcase trade deadline players for sale? Maybe, you know, there'll be some West coast team scouts in the building that may, might not make the trip all the way to the East coast, but could against some of these Canadian teams, especially. And you know, I, I think Justin Braun is one of those guys that, you know, while he hasn't had to play, he, you know, got that third round pick last year. There's no reason to think he couldn't get a fourth or fifth round pick this year. And yep. so having him play and do the 11 forward 7D option, you know, for that purpose makes a certain degree of sense, right? It does. And Torts seems to like it. Uh, he, he always has a smile on his face when he talks about it. It's almost like, yeah, we, you know, We'll weather the storm with that. And and I just feel like, yeah, they could showcase him and it would be a good thing to do. I know it's an odd thing to do, but it just it wouldn't shock me. Yeah, and I think that's somewhere, you know, where what the needs of management are in this case in terms of showcasing for trade deadline versus, you know, doing what's best for the team that Torts wants to do, where that could be in alignment based on, you know, what we've seen from Torts, like you said, about liking playing Justin Braun or like playing a seventh D instead. 
again, it's not something you want to do all the time, but they're in a weird spot here where they're not going to make the playoffs. They could run with a full lineup every day if they just keep Lixel in there and they just keep Braun in the press box, but they can mix it up there and nobody's going to say a word. Yeah, I mean, it could go either way. I would not be surprised if they brought Bellows back up to just sit in the press box um, either or somebody else for that matter. But I do think that um, it is important to showcase, you know, some guys, JVR especially, I would expect him to get as much power play playing time as they can possibly give him oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this next stretch. Yeah, there's no question about that. I mean... He's not having the greatest year. He's really not. But, you know, somebody will take him. I, you know, I question whether even with retention, if you're going to get a second, you might. But it might end up being a third. Yeah, that would be tough for me if it was just a third rounder in return. I think a second is reasonable. But I I try really hard not to overvalue players and, and, you know, try to be you know, level-headed about what potential return could be. I'm in no way, shape, or form expecting a first rounder in return. No, but I, I, Right. So, but I do think a second rounder is pretty reasonable, especially if it's from a top team where that second round pick is going to be near the bottom of the second round. I think, I think that value is about right. I, you know, but the thing is, don't be shocked, Rachel, if it's a second rounder in like 2024. (laughs) That actually wouldn't surprise me at all, but the Flyers don't have one there either, I don't think. Um, So (laughs) uh, there's a lot of second rounders that the Flyers are missing. But besides that, is there anyone else in particular that you think could be showcased on this road trip? Uh, You know, one of the defensemen, whether it's Provorov or Sanheim, certainly um, maybe they could give Sanheim a little different role and see if he looks a little better. He'll probably try and play great against Edmonton and maybe, you know, Edmonton gives him a second look that way. You know, that's, that's something because Edmonton's shopping for other defensemen, but if they fail on those, uh, you know, maybe they would look at Sanheim. So I, I just think the Flyers are going to have to do something like that. You know, maybe same with Ristolainen. I mean, you know, tell them to get a little more offensive. It's not like you have to make major changes to the team to kind of really work both ends. But again, there's a coach there that I'm not sure will even, entertain any of that well he did put Ristolainen on the power play in a recent game so True. I think there, there's something to that where if you show some of his extra versatility that maybe teams hadn't thought of yeah that's something there for sure oh yeah I mean there's we know it's something there uh it would be good to do it again though yeah uh speaking of the power play I think you know one of the things we talked about in our recap of the weekend games yesterday was the second power play unit and that they showed some creativity and some sharpness that maybe wasn't there with the top unit and they were successful, got a goal. Uh, That unit was Morgan Frost, uh, Noah Cates, Joel Farabee, Cam York, and Owen Tippett. And I think that, you know, that is a a pretty solid second unit. I would maybe give him some more time and or maybe instead of Joel Farabee, throw Travis Konechny in there instead and see how that would go and put yeah. Farabee on the other unit. I'm for that because right now, I mean, and I'm not trying to say this just for like a hot take. It's really the worst power play I've seen since I've covered the Flyers. Like, and that's a long time. So uh, I don't recall one being this bad. So I think any and all changes have to be looked at. And I think what you're saying is actually reasonable because then you don't really have to shake it up too much. You're just, Mm -hmm. you know, swapping them out. And yeah, why not? What's it going to hurt? Yeah, I don't think it would hurt at all. And I think that anything that can get that power play moving is a good thing at this point. Yeah, it is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you got to do something. All right. And then lastly, we did mention Ali Lixel and, you know, the fact that Torts to some degree gave him a shot in that game against the Kraken, but moved him down later in the game. He really, I think, needs to get some extra time and to stay up there, you know, just let him complete a game at least without moving him down. 
Yeah, I mean, we're just asking for the bare minimum here, folks. I mean, it's just, you know, <laughs> I, I would like to see him on this trip on the power play. I'd like to see him play full second line time for a couple of games in a row. Uh, I, I'm asking for a lot more than I think is going to happen, but I think he's earned that for what he did in Lehigh, and, and he's a fairly young guy. Like, you don't know what he might be, and I think that I think that's really being overlooked, you know, by this coach for what he's, you know, trying to do with the team. I just don't think he has a real opinion on this guy, and I don't think, you know, he's going to really move heaven and earth to try and help him, so it's kind of like – you know, it's really all on him. And it's not the easiest thing. He's only 23. It's not like he's a seasoned veteran. I don't know. I, I just don't like the whole thing, but it is what it is. Yeah. I hope that uh, they give him the whole road trip and just, you know, yeah. whether he's doing well or isn't just let put him out there and let him go for yeah you're few... not trying to make the playoffs Let, let's not right confuse that with reality absolutely i think that is the right way to go all right well ali looks got called up from the phantoms this past week as we know and there's a lot of stuff going on with our affiliate in lehigh valley and we are going to get to that coming up next Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Uh, I am actually curious to see how the WNBA season coming up gets uh, accounted for on FanDuel with the two super teams in New York and Las Vegas. That should be an interesting season ahead. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at bigger payouts with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Russ, it's Phantoms Tuesday. Uh, again, one of my favorite times of the week on the show. And uh, we had a little bit of news heading into this past week of games. Elliot Denoye, uh, who had been out, uh, he had gotten banged up, came back from injury, and he had a fantastic uh, couple of games. So excited to get into that. Um Hayden Hodgson has been out with an injury, so we got to keep track of what's going there. Kel O'Reilly, man, poor guy. He was out sick on Friday, uh, but did come back into the lineup on Saturday, so it was good to see that. Phantoms had a, a good weekend. Now, they only had the two games, uh, Friday at Hartford and Saturday against Bridgeport, but they won both games, I would say, Pretty handily. Uh, they won at Hartford 5-2, to two, and they got a shutout against Bridgeport. And that was exactly what we said they needed to do, that these yes. were two games where points were very easily there for the taking, and they yep. did it. Yep, no question. I mean, they, they took care of business. They're on a good run right this moment, and I'm happy to see them do that because, you know, with the schedule like that, yeah, those are the kinds of teams that they have to beat. Uh I'm, you know, I'm looking at Elliot Denoye uh, on Instat because I can get actual great real stats here. And, you know, there's some things that are still kind of askew with him. Um, for instance, time on the ice is down. Power play time is down. Shorthanded time is down. Shots are down. Puck battles down. Puck battles one down. Hits are down. A lot of stuff is down. And some of that has to do with the ice time. And you do kind of wonder, like, what is the plan with Elliot Denoyer? I mean, like he has a lot of talent, but if you ask me, it's because of the other parts of his game that aren't complete. So I think he's, right. you know, and but again, you're down in Lehigh. Like I, you're not going to be able to get him to be a perfect uh, defender away from the puck. 
but you can get him to score more. And if you play him more, he's going to score more. Yeah, and he does have a certain degree of physicality to yeah. him. Like, mm-hmm. he'll throw hits. Like, mm-hmm. he's not afraid of it. So putting him in those situations, I think, it is not, you know, out of the realm of possibility. That's for sure. Despite his size. Uh, he did have three goals in the last two games mm-hmm. uh, from from this week. He's now tied with Tyson Forster for the team lead in goals, which getting fewer minutes, you know, especially as of late, that's a, a really good accomplishment for yes. Denoy. But I do think you're right that it, there is something still missing and that's why he's in Lehigh Valley now. And I don't think anybody would argue that that's the right place for him. Yeah. And I think there's still plenty of the rest of this season to go like enough time for him to improve some of those things that he's been lacking on. So uh, one of the other things that we wanted to check in on because we talked about him last week was Zade Wisdom, that we were really worried about him and his development and was he getting appropriate ice time and, you know, were they really working on his development? And of course, like the day or a couple days after we talk about that, he gets back in the lineup and he scores a goal. Now, mm-hmm. you know, one goal isn't everything, that's for sure. He was still on the fourth line in that game and the game on Saturday, but he did get in both those games, which was very, very good. Partially, I think, because uh, Ali Lixel got the call up, so he didn't play on Saturday. But at the same time, Cal O'Reilly also checked back into the lineup and, you know, they made some other small changes. And so the fact that Zaid Wisdom stayed in the lineup I think was a good sign. I thought he did have a good game overall on Friday. Um, I, I think he's really trying to find his place uh, on there. And it, I think it's helpful right now that he is playing on a line with Jordy Bellarive, who has been playing really well as of late. And the two of them have been combining on some really good attempts uh, over the last week or so. Uh, so again, not there yet. I think there's still some things missing, but I think, at least for now, it seems like they're going to give him uh, at least starts to be able to get there. Yeah, I mean, I'd still like to see him with a little more higher end player, but I get it. At yeah. least it's something, and hopefully he's not out there always with the third pairing because again, they have trouble moving the puck. Uh, but yeah, I you know, like we chronicled last week, I really think he's playing right. I just think um, it's just you know not enough opportunity, so the games are good for him. And, and honestly, there's no reason to take him out. Like, again, if there's just, you know, AHL regulars that aren't getting time, then just keep swapping those guys in and out. Like, don't don't swap out the guys that you have a future with. I mean, that's that's yeah. the way I would handle it. But I don't think it's going that way. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that's absolutely worth mentioning is Sam Erson got his first shutout at the AHL level. He had an NHL shutout uh, with the Flyers. But uh, this one was an interesting game against Bridgeport because Bridgeport only had 15 shots on goal yeah, overall not much. for the whole game. It's not much, but he still had to make some key saves. And, you know, as we say very often, sometimes it's harder when you're cold and not getting a ton of shots on net to make those big stops. And he did. Uh, there were also a lot of block shots in that game. I think uh, Adam Karashik blocked like four alone, <laughs> like him alone. But, you know, at the same time, the fact that the Phantoms not only held Bridgeport to 15 actual shots on goal overall, but that, um, they managed to make a really complete game of it with scoring three goals of their own, that it wasn't just like a one, nothing shutout. It was a solid game offensively and defensively. Yeah. I mean, Bridgeport's a little bit of a disaster, but still, um, it's game's a game, man. Game's a game. It's good for Urson for sure. Yeah. And, uh, look right now, he's the, the goalie in favor, you know, Sandstrom's up there right now, but, you know, that's just temporary. And uh, Urson's the guy the coach likes. And, you know, that's that's the dichotomy here. So, uh, but again, because of waivers and other things, uh, it may stay like this for a little while because otherwise they have to make another move that they probably don't want to do. And so I don't know. I don't know where where it all ends. But right now it's it's good for Urson. And if he wins, it's good for the Phantoms. 
Yes. Well, we have some more to talk about with the Phantoms, including some other players and special teams and time in the penalty box, all that kind of stuff that we talked about last week that we wanted to follow up on. And we will do that coming up next. Today's episode is sponsored by Athletic Greens. I started using Athletic Greens because I wanted better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, and hated taking pills and vitamins. And I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, and focus. It costs less than $3 a day, and you're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. It's lifestyle-friendly whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Athletic Greens contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, while still tasting good. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. It's To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Russ. So digging into the phantoms and special teams one of the things that we talked about last week was they have they're having a real issue staying out of the penalty box and that costing them a lot and especially with their penalty kill being the second worst in the AHL overall you know that was a huge issue and they did okay I mean they were 0 for 1 on the PK on Friday um but they only took one penalty so Mm -hmm. it's like there's good and bad in that right yeah i mean there is good and bad in that but you know the fact that they only took one penalty is good that's you know i always like to see discipline discipline's a big thing it can go get you a long way uh in any league but it really does help you win games because no matter what level you're at the more you put them in the box the worse it's going to be for you Yeah, a Saturday, different story, although you could uh, chalk up more than half of the penalty minutes in that game to Kevin Connaughton because he got into a fight um, and then took like a separate penalty on his own later in the game. Uh, But the PK was two for two. So, you know, despite there being a lot more penalties than that, a lot of them were concurrent. So there weren't uh, power plays that came out of it for either team. But the penalty kill was two for two on that day. So I think we'll take it and uh, you know, see if we can. Yeah, see if we can get out of the basement on that stat. Uh, the power play, though, still second in the AHL overall. Uh, they were one for three on Friday and one for two on Saturday. So it didn't get like a huge amount of chances, but they were able to capitalize at least once in both games. So that's good. Yeah, just imagine if the big club could do that with this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, as far as, you know, some of the other guys that, you know, we always want to check in on. Um, I want to talk about Tyson Forster a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's continuing to get better at his non-shooting game. I think that he's getting a lot more well-rounded in his game and he's been working on that. So that may be affecting his offensive output right now that Mm -hmm. he's like trying to tighten up some defensive aspects of his game. I see him skating back a lot harder than maybe he was earlier in the season. Um, He did get two assists on Saturday. They were secondary assists, but still that's a huge part of the play, right? Cause that's the setup play that gets the offensive play in motion. And so he's working really well, I think, um, with his line mates. It's Anisimov, and on Friday it was Lixell, on Saturday it was Bellows, and Bellows came into that game on Saturday really hot, wanting to prove himself. So that line actually looked real good overall on Saturday because I think partially because, again, of because of Bellows and Anisimov has been wanting to you know, get back on the scoreboard Uh, For sure. And, you know, he had a power play goal in that game on Saturday. So I think there was a lot of extra motivation on that line. 
Yeah, no doubt. Um, again, we have to remember he's he's still just 21 and really has played just slightly more than one AHL season uh, in games, you know, total games. So it's good that they're giving him these games and, and not rushing him up. I think, you know, they might give him a look-see later in the season, but uh, he's definitely improving. Uh, he's proving at a decent rate. It's not at a rapid rate, uh, right. but sometimes with a big guy, that's that's what happens. So you have to just let it go at you know let him go at his pace. Uh, he'll get you know twenty something goals this year. You would like to see him to be able to get maybe close to thirty in in the AHL, and that might be a reason that he doesn't make the team next year because you you really want him to maybe turn into like a second line scorer. You don't want him to be another third liner if you could help it. Yeah. I, I do think they're going to call him up after the trade deadline. It, yeah. He just, I think it's too much like candy for yeah. the flyers to not do that. Um, you know, whether we would want them to or not, I, I just don't see an eventuality. <laughs> I, mean, I can't you know, argue with you. You're probably you know, right. Uh, based on the logic, which isn't much logic, but it's logic. Uh, I'm with you. And, and, but the thing is, like down the road, you know, you hope that this guy could score 20 a year in the NHL. That's what that's what the hope is. And right now, we we're pretty sure he can't. But again, if you could score 30 in the AHL, you could score 20 in the NHL. Like that's that's more of what I'm looking at. So let's see, you know, because right now, this moment, Denoyer is scoring at the same rate, you know, and and they're both the same age. So yeah. He's to me, he's got to still separate himself a little from the pack. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I, again, I just kind of see it happening based on yeah. past experience with this. Oh, team. yeah. Uh, Bobby Brink uh, had a couple of assists on the power play, and I think he's really starting to come into his own in the Phantoms power play right now. He's becoming a, a big part of it. And I think he provides like just a little bit of extra punch that maybe the team didn't have before uh th before he came back and this is on like a, a very good power play for the league as we have said um but i think he just gives them a little extra boost because it's a lot more options and he is somebody that can cycle around he's smart about finding the open lanes and can play a couple of different spots on the power play i think mm -hmm. as well and so I i'm you know again he's not like blowing the barn doors off but i think he's making some incremental progress in a lot of different areas of his game that is a really good sign he is i had someone come up to me and say that you know they went to like three straight games or something and you know he's starting to look more comfortable and and the mm -hmm. offense is coming back out and such and that and that's what you want and and yep. and you know the flyers are doing the right thing by sort of letting him show that he could stay healthy and maybe do it even for a few more weeks. And then sure. If you want to give him like, you know, five, six games at the end, do that. But again, you got to make sure he doesn't get hurt. He's got to stay healthy. He's got to have a healthy training over the summer. He really, really needs that. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of opportunity for action this week. We have a four game week, which is a rare occurrence, but you know, I, I think with the way the division is going, they got to get as many points as possible. And especially so today and tomorrow where they have a back-to-back -back at Charlotte, uh, hugely important Saturday, they're playing Wilkes-Barre Scranton Sunday playing Hartford. And so with Charlotte right above him in the standings, the Phantoms really got to steal some points this week. They do. And you worry about Wilkes-Barre, even though they're in last place, how that matchup's going to kind of go because, you know, maybe they might try and drag him into the gutter and, you know, you know how it's yeah, because Wilkes Barre Scranton is at the bottom of the division right yeah. now. So they're playing desperate. <laughs> yeah. And so who knows what will happen in that one. But yeah, this is an opportunity to to get more points. Uh, if you could beat Charlotte, then that's showing you something. But yeah, let's see what they do. Absolutely. Uh, our fun thing is uh, one of the Elliot Denoyer goals for the weekend against Bridgeport. It was a really nicely threaded uh, shot through some traffic in the game. So love to see that. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. We are going to get into the Flyers system goaltending right now. You know, we've had this Felix Sandstrom, Sam Erson situation going on. But, you know, what are they going to do with Carter Hart in terms of potentially doing an early extension on his contract? So much to talk about on that front. And we will have our mailbag as well. So get those questions in. 
via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail, or you can comment over on YouTube where the vote is still open on the Marvel controversy from oh, yesterday's how's show. How's that going? Mm. It's going okay. I think we'll report on it as part of the mailbag. Okay. Sounds so, good. And by uh, the way, I just want to let everybody know in the universe, I am Batman. Okay. Go ahead. You okay. <laughs> Well, we will be back tomorrow to talk about all those topics. I am Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Have a great day, everyone.